the final little aesthetic uh, additive that I'm going to put to my page is um, box shadow. Now, box shadow is pretty cool because it it allows you to uh, make well, sort of like, a, I guess, a drop shadow uh, on elements. And uh, most often, you'll find that it's uh, used on, you know, div containers to give them uh, a three-dimensional feel like this. This, uh, similar if you're familiar with text shadow, it does essentially the same thing except on uh, block-level elements and not text. Uh, so there's a bunch of different ways to use this, and... What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a little trick where uh, I add box shadow to actually uh, HTML, the HTML element, and it'll give me a nice shadow. Um, well, I'm going to set an inset to it, and it's going to give me a nice shadow around the whole rendered uh, view of the page. So uh, I'm going to go to my main.css, and this fits under uh, layout. And what I'll do is I'll target the HTML element. Now, this isn't going to work on every browser, but it's just an additive, you know. It's like a progressive enhancement for browsers who are going to accept it. So uh, I'm not too worried about uh, what visitors are going to see if they don't see it. Um, so the first option I have is called inset. And what that does is that that changes the box shadow effect from, let's see if I have an example here. It changes it from having a box shadow on the outside like you see here, and it gives it, yeah, it makes that shadow happen on the inside. Um, that's exactly what I want. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Now I have to coordinate my, uh, my offset on the x-axis. Now, and that means how you know, here is a negative x-axis offset, and if it was on the left, it would be a positive x-axis offset. For example, these two re refer to their offset on the x. Um, I'm going to leave it to zero, and I'll show you why I'm going to do that when I actually show you the end result. Now, uh, now we're talking about the y-axis offset, the top and the bottom, and I'm going to set, or actually the top rather. I'm going to set mine to 10 pixels or maybe even 20 pixels to kind of give an extreme effect. Now we're going to talk about the blur radius and that's kind of like how far the blur is going to go beyond the page and I'm going to really set it to a lot. 100 and then I'm going to pick a color and I'm going to pick black. So let me show you exactly what's going to happen here. Now here is the page and I'm going to refresh it. Bam. You see how I have this black tint now around everything? And um, if you go down, it's actually the black tint is on the left and on the right evenly because I set it to zero pixels. And on the bottom, it's there's a little something there, but uh, it's similar. But the offset is more 10 up top over here. So let me show you. Um, let me well, let's start with this. So the inset makes the shadow go in. If I take that out, you're not going to see anything because, um, you know, it'd be talking about whatever, like a shadow outside of the browser Chrome, uh, like over here. And currently, this shadow that you see here isn't happening from any CSS. That's just happening from the Mac operating system. So um, as of currently, we don't have control over that. Who knows? Maybe that'll change in the future. Um, so let's put something extreme to really see what, what how this changes things. Here's 50 as our X offset. Um, and if I look back and I give it a refresh, now... You see, here's what happens. It's on the x-axis, so it's pushing everything 10 pixels to the right, that blur effect. Now, if I were to give this a negative effect, uh, a negative value would pop up on the right over here. For example, we give it negative 50, I refresh it, and it shows up on the right. Okay, I don't, I don't want any of that. I don't want it to be lopsided. I want it to be even. So um, there it is, nice and even. Now, as far as the Y, same principle. If it was a negative value, it would be darker down at the bottom. So let's see what that looks like, like 120. And if it was positive, like it was 20 up here, it causes this down here. So let's scroll down to the bottom. I'll give the page a refresh. That looks pretty cool. You know, I mean, that, that, that could certainly work. Maybe we add a little less over there, and it's kind of like a scene, like it's all going dark. 
but um, I actually like it. I like it coming from the top, like you know, like the invaders are coming from the dark abyss over there, um, which is kind of cool. And then you could kind of subtly see this guy coming in, depending on how good your graphics card is. But he's coming. He's coming from the dark down to get us. Um, and the blur. Now, if I add less of a blur, you see. Actually, there you go. It's the diffusion of that blur is less. So when I add that 100, it gives it way more, you know, just kind of goes down a bit more. And of course, you could add another value, which is kind of like, I think, the threshold value, which changes it, let's see, a little bit as well. And that's like the portion, yeah. You see how it just got darker over there? It kind of changes how dark the sides are going to be from where it gets diffused kind of like that line between where it's dark to where it starts diffusing and um, you know the more the the more you expand that the darker the sides are going to be so um, you know let me I'm going to bring this down a little bit I'm going to leave the diffusion the the radius blur to a hundred and I think that uh, it's a really cool effect. I mean, you know, here we go. Here's the peer. Here's a good example. Here was the page before that effect, and it's just you know, like a like a flat purple. And then when I refresh it, uh, okay, the the black up top may be a a bit much, and I could definitely uh, make some. Actually, make maybe I just make some adjustments by the off the offset over there. But I I think overall. It kind of adds a, um, I don't know, a little bit more of a modern uh, look to it. So that's it. Be creative with these kind of things with box shadow because I only discovered this that I could apply it to the um, HTML element uh, recently messing around with things. And uh, I don't know, I've used it on in a couple different projects.